Hello, people on this internet. This is me, Crazy Monkey Dude, signing back in with yet another review. And again, it's another back to back video. And today we're going to be expanding upon something that a lot of people have been doing recently. And uh, maybe a little bit overdone, but I don't know. And uh, that's going to be Canon reviews, or at least Canon model reviews. Uh, now, another person, a couple of the people like. Uh, Let's see, there was uh, Lego Life Studios, that was one of the first people to do it, uh, The Legend Reborn, and of course everyone knows Duck Bricks. He does excellent reviews on the Fanon models, or, you know, models made by uh, fans that were sent in by Lego and canonized in the Lego, uh, official Lego story. And he actually did a review on this one right here, uh, which is by the name of Dar uh, Gatherer, who is a uh, Dark Hunter. And he was a Matoran that the Shadow One wanted the territory of. And he just so happened to be the leader of a Matoran village on the island that this guy wanted. And rather than just slaughtering him, because he was holding out against the Dark Hunters, which is a pretty stupid idea, uh, he became a Dark Hunter against as well. And was uh, noted on stealing pieces of armor that... He was sent on a mission zone and made this big mech, mech suit thing, because obviously my Torn aren't really good at, well, I mean, fighting because of the fact that we're Torn. And he's been a useful asset ever since. Um, and yeah, this is the canon model. I believe it was made by, I wonder if it says in the book. I have the book, so I'm making sure I actually get, yeah, okay, it does. Let me go to gather really quick. It was made by a guy named, there we are, Sam Winfield. Uh, all the way back in 2004, 2005, so we're going to be using models from there to kind of, you know, uh, to do skill. And I think I might be able to get the book on here, but we'll do that later, because I've modified these things, which is something that I do differently than a lot of the other uh, people who review these would do, is that I have slightly altered them in ways, either because I didn't have the correct pieces at the time, and I've just been too lazy to switch them out, or I modified them so they can actually have proper posability and or just look better. Because to be honest with you, some of these look pretty bad. So I'm not going off the base canon model as a disclaimer. I'm going off of my own interpretation of them. And some of them have been drastically changed, while others have just had minor changes. Like, I guess this one kind of falls in a weird limbo. So we'll just get right out of the way with it um, by actually starting the review. And you'll see later. And I'm going to lift it up right here. Of course, we're going to start off with a good old feetsies. Uh, so yeah, starting off the feet. Uh, it's the basics, it's the same feet, same exact design and everything with the red model torsos as the big clunky feet with the Onua claws sticking out. The only things that are different are the fact that on each of these uh, feet, there's supposed to be two transparent or uh, orange Borok eyes. I just don't have them. Also, I think they're in a waste because a lot of other models and sets use them, and those are a hot commodity. Um... The legs as well, they're also the same exact way. Uh, the only difference here is that, of course, I've actually got these mounted, and they actually do move. So if I actually do loosen up the, uh, the holds on this, you know, it'll move with it. Um, well, let's just leave that off, because we'll get to that later. As you can see, we'll get to that later. Um, that's even a problem for the other one, but we're going to just move the leg at the moment. It has a basic amount of articulation. It, has, it can go forward about that much back about that much because of the claw and then up and down it's just a basic leg and it actually holds up pretty well um as you can see it's a weird mess of a met a uh, uh not metru a vaki pelvis there it is a, a vaki pelvis and a vaki leg uh, attached to a uh rock she leg upper leg piece and then of course the galley hook on the back and it has a rock she spines in the front and again uh, the original model doesn't have anything connecting onto these, which is kind of annoying because it'll often just fall out. And the only thing that would hold on were these Borok teeth and the hands on them. I didn't like that. So if I have it so sort of where you can lock it in place if you so chose, which actually does help a lot because this thing's kind of unstable with some uh, poses because of just how it's built. Or you can kind of open them out and splay them out. And you can have a better time moving his leg. Not too much of a better time, but he can move. So this thing is actually able to move up, and you can actually see what's like inside the leg. So nothing too special, as you can probably tell. And it's the same thing on the other leg. Um, and it's topped off with the armor bits here. And now, there was supposed to be a uh, Robo Rider head in silver going down this way. But that's somewhere else, and then I'll explain that later. That's part of my changes. Uh, this is also 
uh, this is in the right place, but as you can see, it can move. And again, that's also uh, due to my change. Let me get the arm back on here. The problem with this model, uh, as you can probably already tell, and even in Duck Bricks' model, where he actually did build the canon version of it, is that for some reason the arms like to pop off really nicely. I don't know why. They're only really connected by one point. Maybe that's why. I don't entirely know. Even with that, it should stay on, but I don't know. Maybe it's just too heavy. I have no clue. Uh, and we're actually going to start with the arm that fell off, and that's the one with the sword. Now, in the original model, uh, a couple things were different. Like, there was supposed to be another armor piece here, and it was connected on the sides, and there's supposed to be another one of these uh, Toa Nuva armor pieces on the back, but again, I don't have those all that much. And again, they're a hot commodity, so I'm trying to save on pieces. Um, and the arm was connected differently. Now, it had both of these rocks you legs connecting it. It was really restrictive of movement, and it had a really big club of just hand pieces for the sword. And I just didn't like that, so I ended up making it the exact same on both sides. And, you know, so you can actually have better articulation and better posing with the sword, which we'll take a look at the sword. It's just Tahu sword on a big red Technic pin or axle with... Uh, Turak stabs with Borok legs on a connector piece that can spin around. And I guess that looks really cool because, you know, it's supposed to be like a power-up or whatever. And this was supposed to be, I think, another one of those uh, silver Borok shields and connected somewhere else. I just didn't do that because, again, I wanted to do it a little bit differently. And he had green Borok eyes. Well, I should have just done that. Well, green Borok eyes. You can see actually more of its belt. He had this weird, like, blade shooter, blade piece, armor piece on the, on the top. And again... This will allow you to kind of see how well posability is. And it actually does allow it a little bit more because you can move this uh, this slicer leg and arm piece around to kind of get it straightened out and all sorts of things. So it allows just better articulation generally. And it just allows... I guess it's a mech suit so it can really bend in really weird ways. So it's fine with that. And again, I, it just allows better posability than having this weird lock right here. And you can't really move the arm all that much. And you can probably also see this big uh, big gunmetal uh, tube running from front to back. And mine are a little bit loose, so that's just piece quality things. Uh, it depends on piece to piece. Again, piece quality. Yours might not come off. Yours might. I don't know. And, of course, things are arguing right there. No. Give me one second. I say fish a bit. There we go. There we go. That's much better. All right, I'm going to go on the other side. Uh, this one, he's got a nice big cannon arm or whatever arm this is, big sludge arm, like hammer. And it's really big, uh, really nicely designed, actually. I like the look of this thing. It has this little rock sheet back on it, the two Nuvak call uh, shields on either side, these slicer or Robo Rider, whatever these pieces are, uh, big Technic pieces on either side to give us more detail, and the, chronic, uh, the light staff piece here. And it's pretty cool. I actually really like this. This is the arm that I really wanted to choose because this one has the best articulation out of the two, even even on modified. And this is the least modified arm. Uh, it has the black Roxy foot here, the arm here. I think the arm is di uh, mounted differently just so it can stop colliding. There's a lot of colliding in this model, by the way. And of course, it has a Kanoko uh, launcher right here. And I don't think this is the correct Pometro disc. It might have been one of the uh, one of the Matorn or one of the Roxy. Or not Matorn, one of the Vakis. Uh, I don't know, so that might be wrong. And then we're gonna flip it over to the back. To the back, we have giant black Roxy backs with the Levax spines. And this is actually where the silver uh, Robo Rider head is, and it's connected a little bit differently. And that Nuvak uh, Levax call piece is actually mounted correctly. And then we have this piece right here, which some of you might be uh, looking at and wondering what that is. And if I were to swing it back around to the like the face cage here, which this can move just up and down, you might be able to notice the head there, and you might have been able to notice it even throughout the review um, with the arbitrary just kind of, you know, Matoran limbs sticking out. I'm actually going to, before we get to that, I'm actually going to grab the book here, go back to the page that was on. Here we are. Let's see if we can get the book in frame. Mainly just, uh, it's not the greatest view of him, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. And he's going to fall. That's fine. But if you look here, uh, he has, this is what it originally looked like. So a lot of the things were moved down. His the, the cage wasn't nearly as high up 
Uh, this was actually reversed, so what I have built is correct. It's just the camera flipped it for whatever reason. I don't know why. And yeah, as you can see, I have some incorrect. This is supposed to be different. That's, that's right, whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter, though. Um, but one notable thing is that that is an orange eyepiece, and you can see the gears there. Now, what was interesting, if you go back and watch the other reviews that actually review this guy, notably Duck Bricks, this was just connected on a pole. Right? So just a big axle beam. And if you can actually read over here... Uh, there we go. Uh, in his former life, Gather was a Matoran, leader amongst his people. Uh, I wanted to emulate that. And it's, also, he was an Onu Matoran. It was specifically stated he was a Onu Matoran. So instead of just... Which, orange is the incorrect eye color. And I'm kind of nitpicky on that. It's kind of a fun fact about me. I'm nitpicky on that. Um... Given the fact that he's an Onu Matoran, and given the fact that he's actually a Matoran, and I really don't like the fact that his head was just mounted on a big, just basically just technic stick, I wanted to do a little something different. So I'm actually going to show you this right now. If I were to move the head cage up a little bit, uh, we're going to do a disconnect here. I have to disconnect this in a weird way. So we're going to take this off and then move these out to the side, and then we're going to drop down that piece there, which is why it can move. We could take out... This is a little bit finicky because of the fact that it's, you know, kind of, you know, cramped. If I could take him out. I've done this before. Plenty of times before. There we go. See? what I tell you? Let me do that. And you can really see a good how it was supposed to be built. Like, again, there was supposed to be a big Technic piece here. And you can really, again, you can really see how it was meant to be built. And it's a big hollow cavity. And this wouldn't look good. And now there's something in here in the back I'm going to take out. And we're going to do that. And then it can just sit there for a moment. And I'm going to put the mask on because what that ba what that back part was was a mask chamber, and what I just pulled out was a Matoran, and an Onu Matoran, and I gave this guy a non-canon. This is non-canon, by the way, uh, model for it because we never got an actual canon depiction of what Gatherer looked like in his Matoran stage. But I did my own little interpretation, and this is the Matoran that I was able to fit in there. It is this guy. He's a basic 2007 Matorn, but he uses the 2004 Matorn uh, limb pieces because the Borak limb is a little bit too big. I tried that. So he's a little bit shorter than most of the 2007 Matorn, I think. Could be wrong. But he's got a really long neck. And that's just so he could actually clear the um, the space for the uh, Borak leg to go across his chin and all that stuff, the chin guard. And he wears a black Huna that came on the uh, Connie Ra. My, my bad, Connie Ra. Oh, yeah. So this is the Matoran I was actually able to fit in there. And he's a full Matoran. He's not just a head on a stick sitting in a big empty cavity. He's also very short. And that is actually where we're going to go into the size comparison really quick with just the Matoran. Just the Matoran. So we're going to move the big mech out of the way. Bring the camera down a little bit. Bring him center stage. He falls down. And we're going to bring just Takua in. Just to cool it, and I said, without everyone falling over. And as you can see, yes, he's very small. He's not the biggest Matoran, but the mere fact I was actually able to get a Matoran sized uh, build inside of this thing was a miracle because this that was what took this build so long. Because after I learned, I could have just kept it the same way, but I am a stickler for canon. So. I decided to go the extra mile, and that's what I mean by I wanted. I, I'm doing my own things with these because I wanted to, and uh, make them a little bit more canonically accurate. Now, without the um, the mask holding it in, this thing kind of flops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them back in the uh, the mech. We're gonna put the mask in here, and the Huna in particular can hook onto the back of this Mata torso right there and it holds really nicely in place there it's nice it's, it's held in place like you can hear it rattling but it's held in place really well in there i'm gonna keep this open and then we're gonna take this boy we're gonna do something really weird we're gonna take his arms put him to the back like thus and we're gonna put his hands to the side and you're gonna be able to kind of mess around in them in the back with the roxy backs and we're just going to slip them right back in here. It's a little bit finicky. Again, if I could put them in, you could take them out. It's just difficult. It's not the easiest thing, which kind of makes sense as I get them in there relatively easy. And again, you're able to kind of put your hand back here and, you know, fiddle about with it. Even if you really need to, the arms coming off is kind of a good thing because you can actually get in there and actually do more without the big arms getting in the way. 
and get him in a rough position. And yeah, there we go. He's kind of secured in there. And then we're going to move the legs out of the way a little bit. Bring this hatch up. Move the legs back so they can actually hold on to the thing. Get them nice and seated. There we go. He's nice and locked in there now. We're going to put the Borok limb back onto... Well, actually, first we're going to close up these pla uh, these hand pieces. Push them back a little bit. Put the Borok head or Borok limb right across his face. Like that. Um, keep the hands out a little bit. I think this one is what's keeping him a little bit. There we go, a little bit out of place. And then this headpiece, uh, the reason why I have, I'll use a lot of these. The reason why I have a lot of those is because if you just push the headpiece down, it fits really nice with the Roxy backs, and you can just kind of rearrange it and keep the Onuma Claw just over his face and just kind of mess it about. But I'm not going to do that on camera because I've done that enough. And now we're going to do a uh, size comparison with other builds. We're going to bring back Jakui here. And we're going to compare it with size, with the mech in place. Stand him up correctly if he wants to, which he doesn't. That's fine. All right, bring that back a little bit. As you can see, relatively big. We're going to bring in a Scott. Actually, no, we're going to bring in a Metro build. And I'm just, I grabbed Toelicon because it was thematical. He fought a lot of the Dark Hunters and, you know, Metro Nui. So where can I put him? We're going to put him in the back. Uh, no, he's out of frame. We'll just move him out of frame a little bit. He goes about the shoulder. Actually, he's about eye height. They can actually look each other in the eyes, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to just bring in a Scotty. And I'm going to actually move Lacan out of the way. And we're going to bring in a Scotty. Just an Eric Scotty. There we go. And as you can see, he's actually pretty sizable. He's very bulky. And again, I think it looks really good. Uh, the building technique of just, I mean, I was really fortunate with this tank, uh, with this build because it actually had a giant hol hollow space for me to improvise with, and that's what I did. And I really am happy with what it came out. Uh, sorry for half of this video being me struggling to put them in and out, but I really wanted to show the fact that you could put them a torn in and out. And uh, one last final note. Uh, the Borok chassis are supposed to rely flush with the, uh, the black Mata torso, but... In order for the Matoran to be in there, I had to space them out by one. So there's two bushings on either side, or I guess by two. So there's one bushing here and one bushing here on either side so that it can actually accommodate the size of a Matoran. That's really about it. And I have to go over cons briefly. Uh, he's a little bit fragile, as you can, as you probably saw earlier in the video. The arms like to pop off really relatively frequently. Uh, the Roxy backs do kind of pop off, and I have them stuck down with a uh, pin, so they are even more prone to it, because I think mine are a little bit bent, so they're not the best at friction. Uh, getting them a torn in and out is difficult, but again, this mock was not supposed, this model was not supposed to hold them a torn, so that's a little bit of my, band, uh, my end. Uh, the posability on the legs, eh, they could be better, but also, I mean, it's supposed to be a mech, which I do believe this thing uh, actually does pretty well at being a mech. Uh, the golly hooks back there, though, um, I don't know if they're really necessary, but I added them on there because I guess they look cool, and that's really about it. And the posability in the arms, even in general, even with the modifications I did, are not the best. So, would I recommend the model, though? Absolutely. Whether or not you want to build my version or the Canon version, that's up to you. Uh, I might do a bit of a breakdown how-to video on Discord, or even make a video on it, or DeviantArt, or whatever. Um, later on, so you can get my version of Gatherer, but other than that, that's basically about it, and what I have to say for Gatherer, and that's, yeah, the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please, uh, rate, comment, share, whatever, the basic YouTube shit that you need to do, and, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, tomorrow, again, it's Baraki week this week, so tomorrow's video is gonna be Mantax. I said it a lot in the previous video with Man uh, with Pridex, sorry. And uh, I might be doing a review on Primal tomorrow. I might do another Dark Hunter. I'm not entirely sure. That's up to me, though. So, yeah, I'll let you know with that when you see the video. Uh, again, this is Crazy Monkey Dude signing back out with, uh, signing out with this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.